So in this video, I'm going over setting up an enterprise environment in a home lab or your home or small business because a lot of these things I wanted to teach just kind of the fundamentals so you can go out and do some crazy things. And even if you're just doing a Plex Media server or hosting your pictures and videos on your home lab, or you know, you want to expand your IT skills and look at maybe a senior systems engineer job or something of that nature, well, all of this is really gonna help you because you're gonna know what enterprise environments would use. So obviously we can't use exactly what they're using, but I'm gonna go ahead and lay out the three fundamentals, and those really are storage, virtualization, and servers. And we're gonna to touch on those three pillars. I'm gonna kinda of show you what I use in my home lab and also tell you what you'd see in maybe an enterprise space. So first off, let's go ahead, jump right into storage. Now in storage, in a previous video where I talked about Windows servers in, in enterprise or business, well, I said ZFS is my go-to. In ZFS, I usually would be using an Oracle appliance and that would have support and other things tied into it. That appliance itself typically starts on the low end between probably twenty dollars and $50,000 and goes well up into the six figures depending on the needs of the business not really conducive of a home lab. So how do you learn that tech? How do you understand how ZFS works? All these things. Well, there's a project called FreeNAS. FreeNAS is fantastic. A lot of people might be groaning when I say that just because FreeNAS in its early days had kind of a crappy GUI and some other things. But I think really XI or IX Systems has done a fantastic job revamping its GUI and really making it kind of sexy in recent years. I've really done a lot of videos since FreeNAS 11 came out. It was one of the actually first playlists I had on the channel and IX Systems actually featured it in their LinkedIn and also on their Twitter. So big shout out to them. They were actually one of the first things that got this channel going before I kind of found my uh, niche in, in Linux. And with that, what FreeNAS is, is it's based on FreeBSD, not Linux. And also it runs ZFS, which is that file system that I absolutely love because of how reliable performance is better. Just Everything across the board on ZFS just shoots everything out of the water from any other file system. Now, having said that, uh, a lot of people are going to go, wait a second, uh, better FS or ext4 these types of file systems are very good and that's what linux uses and far better than what windows uses which is ntfs and fat32 which is garbage uh, proprietary garbage at that it's not even better than anything on the market it's actually one of the worst file systems out of all of them <laughs> so uh, just to kind of give you a range of file systems there but to get back to my original point freenas will teach you kind of how zfs works it'll teach you a lot of the fundamentals. Now, if you're interested in FreeNAS, I, again, I've already done a bunch of videos. I have about 10 videos over FreeNAS going over setup, installation, what happens if a hard drive fails, how to actually change things out, uh, a whole variety of things, and actually kind of check up on the actual disks in FreeBSD. All these things are pretty much mandatory when it comes to a storage environment, and this is a great spot to kind of cut your teeth and jump into this storage because honestly, the storage is the foundation and where everything is stored. Now, FreeNAS by itself, you can do some cool things with it. Uh, it does jails, which you know you could actually spin up like Plex server and other things. And I've done a video on that as well. I don't particularly like this feature. You can use it if you're not interested in the virtualization piece that I'm about to jump into. Uh, however, I use it exclusively for storage just because I love its storage. I think the jails are, yeah, you know, I, I don't really enjoy them. I'd rather run a separate server virtualized on bare metal hardware somewhere else. But the storage in ZFS is so, so powerful because you can set up NFS shares, you can set up SMB shares if you have a mixed environment between Windows and Linux, you can set up uh, even Apple shares if you want. Uh, but it, everything, everything's fair, sh fair game. And uh, I've also used iSCSI shares for connecting 
basically direct attached storage, which is if I set up a server, but I don't want to use its internal storage to store anything, I can actually use that iSCSI uh, target and connect that up and say, hey, this is its hard drive sitting over on the FreeNAS server, but all the hardware from this actual computer or host is going to be used. So very, very powerful stuff. Uh, I love it. Learn FreeNAS, learn all the ins and outs of it, learn the different types of storage shares, NFS, iSCSI, uh, SMB, Apple Share, if that's a thing. I, I'm not an Apple guy. I don't like using Apple pretty much anything, so I never really use that portion of it. But everything's there in FreeNAS. That's why it's the first piece of the puzzle. And uh, again, check out that playlist. I'll link it up here and in the description. And then second on the piece of the puzzle of an enterprise environment is virtualization. So uh, pretty much every enterprise environment runs VMware. Some uh, use Hyper-V, but that's kind of uh, falling behind now as far as performance and other things. So I don't really recommend Hyper-V anymore. Almost everything's VMware. They've done a great job of keeping up. And then there's what's called Citrix Zen Server. Now Citrix Zen Server by itself kind of has a niche virtualization market and it's been out uh, for about a decade now for quite a while and its uh, niche market is GPU pass-through because it does it pretty well and they actually put this behind a paywall so you can't really get to it using Zen server even though they claim it's open source which it's kind of there but a lot of the features again are locked behind a paywall so why am I bringing all this up there's a project called XCPNG, which is fantastic. Uh, it's basically Zen Server, but they forked the open source portion of it and then looked at all the paid features and just added them in and open sourced everything. The company that did this is Zen Orchestra, which has done the web GUI for Zen Server for many, many years. And also, they give that away for free. And if you want all the features of this really powerful software, which basically put your entire hypervisor dashboard in your web browser. Um, you can just build it from source and you'll have every single paid feature and everything right there. Uh, so why would they give out all this for free? Many people would ask. And that is if you're gonna do this in a business environment, they have support plans. And those support plans are pretty pricey. As you can imagine, if you're doing this in a data center, you definitely have some money to throw around and those support plans are basically pennies to a big business that would save so much money doing XCP and G instead of like a VMware setup. It'd probably be, I'd venture one tenth to one hundredth the price of VMware licenses. So a big difference. And if I was actually administering it, I'd want some kind of support. So it'd be a no brainer. But for you, the home user, what this means is you can use XCPNG, get full functionality across the board, have everything in your home lab to virtualize and do pretty much whatever you want. And again, I've done a bunch of videos. I'll link up a playlist that goes over virtualization. And basically what virtualization, if, if you're watching this video and you don't know what that is, it's using one computer or one ba base hardware and then putting like four or five PCs inside of it, or, or virtualization instances. I call them VMs, virtual machines. And they all run on the bare metal as if it's its own machine, which is pretty awesome. They all have their independent NIC cards, and it's it's just way better than anything you've done. Um, it's not the same as running like KVM or a virtual box or a VM workstation or those types of things. That sits on top of an operating system. This actually works right off the bare metal. So that's why bare metal hypervisors are super important. And XCPNG for a home lab, I think, is just an awesome addition um, because otherwise you're messing with VMware and it's usually trial-based license keys. And it's just a, a pain in the butt to set up. When If I had all the keys, for sure, VMware is awesome. Um, but a lot of times I just don't like messing with it. So X XCPNG to me is a natural thing. And I'll put the playlist down in the description so you can learn more about XCPNG and setting up those bare metal hypervisors and getting your feet wet in virtualization because you have to know virtualization, especially if you're looking at, you know, senior system engineer and those types of things. But for me personally, I use my XCPNG center hosts uh, for those host systems. I use like Plex, um, 
Nextcloud, and, and a bunch of other types of systems. So uh, you load up whatever you want on there. If you want to run your web browser or website through it, you can totally do that as well. Uh, usually in a four core to eight core system, you could load up anywhere between four and eight VMs uh, relatively comfortably as long as you had the memory to support those VMs. But uh, that's just my opinion uh, on all that. I really love running a lot of Linux-based servers, which is the, kind of like the next topic. And Linux servers are so powerful. And if you don't install a GUI, which many Linux desktop users always have like desktop environments and all this overhead to Linux. And I actually had to learn all that in this past year because that's kind of the main focus of this channel is Linux desktop. But Linux servers, oh my gosh, why it's so big in business, why it's the majority of servers is because it is so lightweight and also extremely powerful. I can make a server do just one thing and then only allocate maybe one gig of memory and one virtual CPU, which I can honestly share with another system if there's not much going on in that VM. Ah, it's, it's really, really powerful. So when it comes to servers... I really cut my teeth on Linux servers and I love Linux for its servers capability. And that's why almost every data center is just full of Linux servers because you can just assign it one role and just say, hey, I only want this VM to do this. And then guess what? With the virtualization setup, you can do what's called HA or high availability. And once you set up HA in there, you can just say, hey, if this host dies, let's say you have a that... Uh, power supply goes out in that host. With HA set up, you already have another image of it and it just transitions that entire server running into this other host. So here at the house, I have two or three kind of throwaway machines that constantly die and do glitchy things. I should probably throw them away, but I really like setting up HA and simulating a really unstable environment to kind of check out uh, having some really crazy things happen because it's really neat to see HA kind of move the VMs around as the systems fail. And I, I kind of make a little game about it, you know, trying to keep 100% uptime on really, really crappy hardware, which when you go into business and you have all this redundancy, it's very rare you ever have one host die, um, much less two or three. And, and emulating that in a home environment is super powerful, especially when going into the employment field, because I think that a lot of people don't realize is once you get in and you get a job, usually uh, people look at certifications and some experience and they're like, okay, this person's looked or seen these types of environments before, therefore they must be qualified. And you get a lot of paper tigers and people that just don't have much experience or they've been sitting there with lots of experience, but nothing's really ever happened in that environment. So they don't know what happens when, you know, crap hits the fan, so to speak. So, that's why I really think it's important to make this enterprise environment in home lab, and that's how I personally do it. So just to recap, for storage, set up a free NAS box. Totally awesome. If you don't know how to do that, entire playlist down in the description. And then also next up is the virtualization XCPNG. I'll put the link down below and then also leave you a playlist of virtualization so you can kind of learn all about it. And then lastly, the servers aspect. Now, Linux server, that is literally hundreds of videos. And really, it's learning that. I, I need to do more content on setting up a Linux server. I've done like LAMP stacks and other things throughout my Linux videos. Uh, check out my Linux playlist there. That's almost 100 videos now. And a lot of it deals with desktop environments and servers. I'm going to try and break some of that out into a Linux servers playlist and uh, do better on this aspect of it. But just know that you need to learn Linux server and do LAMP stacks and those types of things. And if you need a recommendation from me, I highly recommend Ubuntu 18.04 has a lot of quick setups for LAMP stacks, next cloud servers, uh, Plex media servers, if you're doing that. Uh, very easy to follow along with a lot of steps online. However, if you're trying to learn it for business, I highly recommend downloading and using CentOS because almost all the data centers of the world use RHEL or Red Hat Enterprise Linux and you know you kind of need to learn those as well. Uh, but that's it. Setting up enterprise environment in a home lab. These are kind of the basis of it. I know I didn't actually show 
uh, much of it. I just kind of want to give you an idea of what it looked like uh, taking uh, the high availability, all that redundancy in an enterprise environment, putting in a home lab at roughly a, a very low cost. I use a lot of recycled hardware or old dead hardware or crappy hardware for this setup. And it's amazing how much redundancy and just plain awesomeness you get from doing this. So I highly recommend everybody try it. And let me know what your questions and thoughts are down in the comments section below uh, because there's so much to this. I'm going to try and break this out into maybe a series coming up. Let me know if that's interested to you. And a big shout out to my patrons. Without you, these videos would not be possible. And I'll see you in the next one.